Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. So, the Z97 platform is here, but other than a few cosmetic changes, there's not much to entice most users to upgrade from Z87. I mean, of course, there's support for the Haswell refresh, and promise support for Devil's Canyon, and promise support for Broadwell, but that's all kind of future stuff. So right now, the real enthusiast addition to Z97 is PCI Express connected storage via SATA Express, which is also coming in the future. So we talked about it a bit during our other Z97 video, but there was enough confusion in the comments to warrant a video just for SATA Express alone. So let's kick this off. What is SATA Express exactly? I, I mean, at its most basic level, it's actually just the SATA 3.2 specification. Previous SATA iterations uh, were SATA 1, which ran at 1.5 gigabit per second, SATA 2, which ran at 3 gigabit per second, and SATA 3, which ran at 6 gigabit per second. Uh, but aside from that being confusing, because SATA is often, well, more correctly referred to by its link speed, so SATA 3 gigabit per second is often confused with SATA 3, 6 gigabit per second. Aside from that, it hasn't really progressed much in a while, and we're still stuck with 6 gigabit per second connectivity, which we've had since the standard was ratified way back in August 2008, which is a long time in the IT industry. Now, I'm going to take a moment to make this clear. 6 gigabit does not mean 6 gigabytes per second. If that were true, it would all be like fast enough for quite some time. It translates to a theoretical maximum rather of around 768 megabytes per second. However, there is some overhead with the standard, so really the absolute theoretical maximum would be around 600 megabytes or less in the real world. So you might start noticing something a little bit funny then. If you look at the benchmarks of modern SSD drives, you're looking at sequential read speeds that top out at around 490 megabytes per second to 514 megabytes per second, or maybe a little bit beyond. And that's a bit of a problem because at those speeds, we've hit the limit of what SATA 3 6 gigabit per second can do. And you're not really going to notice much difference going from one drive to another unless you're looking at a very specific workload, like one that requires, you know, a ton of random IOPS, like in a server application or something like that. But even that is starting to become more uniform as the onboard controllers reach maturity. So the only way to truly end this bottleneck is to, well, come up with something new. So. The SATA protocol needed to be updated, and originally the Serial International Organization, uh, SATA IO, wanted to implement a new 12 gigabit per second speed standard, but that meant requiring a ton more power, which would have translated to more heat, and would have possibly decreased flash memory durability. So they turned to PCI Express as an alternative. Even PCI Express Gen 2 offers 8 gigabit per second on a mere 2x link and 16 gigabit per second on a 4x link. And with PCI Express 3.0, that leaps to 16 gigabit per second and 32 gigabit per second, which translates to about 1.6 or 3.1 gigabytes per second, respectively. All right, so back to SATA 3.2, or as it's now known, SATA Express. It's a way to utilize PCI Express lanes over a cable to a separate drive for transferring data. Now, this motherboard right, which one is it? This one here, ah, yes. This motherboard right here is a Z97 board with SATA Express. That's this little connector right down here. It looks like your standard SATA bundle, however, there's a twist. You could either use these por four ports for SATA, or, I think he means these two ports, yeah, you can either use these two ports for SATA, or you can plug in these three bottom ports all together and combined, that is a single SATA Express connector. Now, the need for faster SSDs is obvious for, you know, gamers and enthusiasts, nobody likes load screens, but there's more to it than that. 4K video content is a thing, maybe not on this channel. <laughs> wow. 
I'm getting the glares. I'm, ge I'm getting the glares. And uh, the thing about that content is that it's extremely high bit rate, particularly uncompressed or raw video content. And that's well over the SATA 6G limit. So the only way to really uh, work with it is to use RAID 0 as a workaround or by expensive PCI Express uh, SSDs that take up your PCIe slots and are quite expensive. So there you go. Now SATA Express looks to address that need in the short term. The other thing that's been improved here is AHCI, which really was an optimized way to address physical media. This is most clearly highlighted by the fact that it supports one queue with 32 commands, whereas the new NVMe, so non-volatile memory express standard, supports 64 queues with 64 64,000 queues? Wow, okay. With 64,000 commands each, which means that you can have multiple cores addressing their own queue of memory addresses all simultaneously. The other advantage is lower latency, which is on the order of 2.8 microseconds rather than AHCI's 6 microseconds. And so obviously, these blistering speeds are going to help with heavy enterprise workloads, enthusiast workloads, and anyone else who really just appreciates snappiness when it comes to data fetching. On my personal rig, I run eight SSDs in RAID 0, and everything feels snappier. There is a difference when going back to a system with just one drive. So I'd imagine that SATA Express would be able to provide this type of responsiveness to the consumer that's running a more commodity setup with a single drive as opposed to an add-in RAID card and then like a whack ton of SSDs. But there are some drawbacks with SATA Express. One being that there are only so many PCIe lanes on a motherboard. So some of these will be from the Intel CPU. Some of these will be from a chipset. So that's where we can run into a little bit of performance and compatibility. And I mean, obviously, we don't have any SATA Express drives, so we can't really test it, which is, I guess, the, the, <laughs> the, the other major issue. They're not really rumored to be here until later this year. But for now, the whole compatibility thing is a bit of an unknown quantity. So then I get yeah, right. So the other issue is <laughs> we, don't, we don't have any yet. And it's all kind of theoretical right now. But if you want to get a jump on the whole PCI Express connected storage bandwagon, then there are other options available to you because really SATA Express is just a part of the complete SATA 3.2 standard, which also includes M.2 storage, which many more boards include, even some of the slightly older ones like this one right here. That is an M.2 slot. It essentially replaces the old M SATA slot that some boards had, but instead now uses the M.2 portion of the SATA 3.2 standard, which is, of course, PCI Express based. Another option is something like the Plextor M6E drive, which is actually just an M.2 uh, like daughter board on a PCIe 2x 2.0 adapter. So this isn't the same PCI Express SSD that you're used to. This one is actually completely driverless and can function easily as a boot drive right out of the box. There's no like RAID controller chip on it or anything like that. The final thing we'll say about it is that it's about time with so many SSDs looking so similar in terms of performance. It's almost become a matter of buying an SSD based on like warranty and reliability as the actual performance delta is so minor that in most use cases there is no perceivable difference. I mean, I guess there's like things like features, like full disk encryption and stuff like that, but it's turned kind of commodity on us here and I'm excited to see another like enthusiast grade arms race when we start getting next gen and sand force and all those other kinds of cool drives that are going to be coming. Thank you guys for watching. Comment below and tell us if you think you're ready for next gen SSD storage or if SATA 3 is going to serve you just fine for some time. And as always guys, don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips for more videos like this from NCIX.com. That's how the outro music goes.